Hey everyone, I have a follow-up video for all of you today. How lucky are you? Two months ago, I published a video where I spoke about migrating my main YouTube recording and editing setup from a desktop Windows PC to an Apple Mac. More specifically, the base model 2025 Apple Mac Studio M4 Max chip, 36 gigabytes of unified memory. And I will say, spoiler alert, the migration was a success. But I want to give you a little behind the scenes as to what's going on and just talk about the migration. And this is the part where proper YouTubers would switch to the fancy Sony camera in the background there and take some beautiful 4K pan and zoom footage to show you my cool setup. I'm not gonna do that because it's absolutely no fun. But what I am going to do is connect my DJI Action 5 Pro. Now, again, a proper YouTuber would connect a capture card, get some beautiful 4K footage. I'm doing it the lazy way. I've got a cable connected directly to the Apple Mac Studio and I'm recording in 1080p because that is where the magic happens. 1080p is where it's at. So, in the corner there, you can see my Apple Mac Studio. There it is, and just from a, a size perspective, there is the M4 Mac Mini, the little baby. So, the Mac Studio there, the cable in the front is actually the action camera, and at the back, you'll see lots of cables connected. I've got the Thunderbolt 5 enclosure connected, I've got my audio interface, stream deck, I've got everything that I need connected. And from a hardware perspective, the big thing was moving over my cameras. Now, with my Windows PC, which I can show you with my fancy camera. Um, I've removed the motherboard graphics card, etc., because those are listed on eBay. But when I had everything in here, I had a PCI Express card, the 4K Pro capture card from Elgato. But obviously, you don't have that on an Apple Mac. You don't have PCI Express slots. So what I've got instead is two 4K X capture cards from Elgato, Type C connections, and they work great. And that's what I'm recording with just now. One is for uh, the overhead uh, camera there and one is for the main camera there. And to give you a crude look at it, there's the main camera right there and there's the overhead camera. That's the setup. So that was a very, very easy migration from a hardware perspective. Uh, I do still have this other Elgato capture card which I can use for capturing gaming footage or you know footage from a Raspberry Pi or connected computer, etc. So yeah, all of that is great. And from a hardware perspective, it's fine. Now from a software perspective, it's a little bit different. You know, the, these Elgato capture cards, for example, on Windows, you get really good applications. It's very easy to change settings and update firmware, etc. On Mac OS, in comparison, it, it's kind of garbage. You know, the, the Elgato apps were crashing on me a lot. And even when you open up the application, you, you know, the, the number of settings is, is just really restrictive. There's not a lot of options, not a lot of settings to change. And even the firmware updates, you know, it wasn't even showing that there was a firmware to update initially. It, it's just a little bit more problematic and, and less user-friendly than on Windows. But I got it working and I think I got it working and I've not got a problem with it is because I'm just using two cameras. I don't have a complex setup. I'm essentially just capturing 4K footage from these cap uh, from these capture cards. So yeah, not as good as on Windows, but it still works and that's good enough for me. Now, software perspective, DaVinci Resolve, another important uh, application for me and it's what I will rec uh, edit this video on. So I edit all my videos on and switching between Windows and Mac, it's fine. I just had to, you know, ask ChatGPT how you migrate the settings over, etc., and copy over all my effects and different things. But that was fine. Audio interface moving over, that was fine. OBS, it is for the most part, it's the exact same application. I think Windows, some of the options to me seemed a little bit better, but for the most part, OBS, which again I can show you very crudely, crudely here, OBS is effectively 100% the same. Now you can get Streamlabs and other solutions on Mac as well. I've not tested those, but you know, for the most part, you can get an application that's on Windows for Mac, but they're just not always as good. But from that perspective, from the recording perspective, everything has been okay. I do think Windows is slightly better when it comes to recording and streaming for YouTube and Twitch, etc. But no issues, I'm happy. I've migrated over 
and everything is working. Now, from a software perspective, that there, there are obviously other things to consider. You know, it, maybe this goes into the whole realm of Mac versus Windows, you know, depending on what your, your flavor is. But I will say that Finder, ah, I'm not a massive fan of it. I do think Windows Explorer is a lot better. I do realize there's a lot of, you know, like Apple Mac OS tricks and shortcuts that I've not familiarized myself with yet, but I do think Windows Explorer works better. But what I do love about the, the closed ecosystem is just how easy it is. Now, I've always been someone that loves open platforms. I love being able to switch between Mac OS and Windows and Linux and, you know, anything else. And I like being able to do that and being adaptable because then you pick up, you know, the best solution. But there are cons to that. There's definitely negatives with that. And there are benefits of working within a closed ecosystem. A good example of that would be my iPad Pro down here. And all you have to do is go up there and say, extend the display. And that becomes a monitor, a second monitor. And I've just extended my desktop. Really good because I can switch back to using that as a tablet at any point. It works great. And there's just lots of things like that. They just work really, really well. It just It's just effortless. And I was actually confused about that one day because I had set up two mice. I, I've you know, got a couple of these MX Master 2s and 3s. And I was using both of these. And I'm like, why is this not working right? And what I hadn't realized is that when you've got a mouse connected to your, your Mac Studio, or your Mac Mini or your iPad, it, it, you can just effortless, effortlessly go between them. Same with the keyboard, it just connects and it just works. And, and that's the thing with, with this you know, type of closed ecosystem is from a productivity point of view, it has saved me a lot of hassle. If I record uh, footage on my iPhone 17 Pro Max or I take a photo, I could just airdrop it up and it's just on my computer instantly. That's it. No transfers, no messing about. It's just effortless. Same with my AirPods Pros uh, 3s. I've had these since launch as well. And I've actually been using these to edit videos with rather than my normal headset. And these just connected to my phone. And then once I connected them to my phone, they were also connected to the Mac Mini, the Mac Studio, the iPad Pro. And it's just like things like that. It's, it's little things, but I will say from my productivity point of view, from recording and editing videos all of these things just help and even looking at like the mac mini down there as well i can just connect to it like that that's just screen sharing so i don't have any hdmi cable connected i don't have any connection to a monitor to the mac mini but i can just use it here as if it's connected directly so there's lots of things like that they just work really well now of course, if you know, I'm sure some of you are going to say, well, you can do that in Windows as well. Of course you can. There's lots of applications, services, etc., that let you, you know, remotely dial in or connect computers together. There's lots of good alternatives out there. But it's the fact that I think with Mac OS, it's the fact that it's all built in and it's just effortless. So from my point of view, I still love Windows. I've got a Windows laptop. I'm still looking at Surface 2 and 1 laptops and, and gaming laptops that are uh, using Windows. I still like Windows. Yes, they went a wee bit kind of evil with the privacy over the last few years, but I, I, do, I do still like Windows. I use it all the time. But there is a lot to be said about the closed ecosystem that is Mac OS. But from my point of view, from a, a YouTube recording editing setup, I think this kind of closed system of everything being connected here, my iPad, my phone, computers, etc., it makes my life a lot easier. So I can understand why people get trapped into the Mac ecosystem because I think once you get used to some of that stuff, it, it's really good. Um, I will say though that I think for many YouTubers, you probably should still stick with Windows, but it does depend on your recording and editing setup. I think if you're a game streamer, you're, you're going to get access to more tools and you know applications and, and just little useful features on Windows that you don't get on Mac OS. But I'm kind of using OBS in a limited way just to record video footage. I'm not gaming streaming or anything like that. So that was never a consideration for me. So for me, it was a very easy migration from a desktop Windows PC to an Apple Mac Studio. All in all, yes, there was a few teething problems at the start, but all in all, it was a success. And I'm happy that I made the migration from Windows to Mac. This is not an anti-Windows video. I have to stress that again. I do still like using Windows and I will still continue to buy Windows devices. 
But from my productivity point of view, migrating from Windows to Mac was without doubt the best decision that I made this year from my YouTubing point of view. So thanks for watching guys. I hope you've enjoyed this crude behind the scenes video with this amazing 1080p webcam. Look at this, look. I should have a million subscribers with this type of thing. Whoa! So um, many thanks guys. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Any questions, please do post them down below. If you've enjoyed the video, thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll speak to you all in the next one. Take care.